Hello and welcome to the Engineering Academy. This series is all about learning the principles behind building complex rigs in Space Engineers, with the focus on understanding the mechanics. In this episode we are going to learn about the different types of grids, their characteristics and their applications. It's going to be about the basics, but not the basics in terms of the very first steps in the game. That topic is already covered by Splitsy, and he did an amazing job. You should definitely check it out. And they mean it. If you're completely new to the game and still struggling to survive, find basic resources or build your first base, then this video isn't for you yet. Go ahead, find Splitsy's video in the description and start there. Then. When you learn the basics of the survival and feel annoyed enough by hand mining and carrying resources through your inventory, come back here and learn engineering with us. For those who stayed, let's dive deep into grids. The game itself differentiates between two types of grids. The large grid with the cell size of 2.5 meters and the small grid with the cell size of just half meter. There are three ways to switch between grid sizes while building. The first one is simple. Just look at the grid you want to attach your block to. The game will automatically adjust the grid size for you. The second method is by pressing the same toolbar number again. In my case number 4. This switch the grid size and align the block with your character's view. It's super handy when placing your very first block and you want it straight relative to your site. And finally, pressing R switch the grid size without changing the block's alignment. The orientation stays the same, which is useful when you just want to swap grid type mid-build without messing up your placement. The large grid can exist in two states, static and dynamic. In the static state, the grid is connected to the ground and cannot be moved by anything. By ground I mean any solid surface, like a planet or asteroid. This limits the use of static large grids to bases only. In the dynamic state the grid is free to move and will be affected by physical forces like gravity, thrust, gyroscopes or impacts. Dynamic grids are used for anything that needs to move, like rovers or ships. Just keep in mind. Large grid vehicles are pretty damn heavy. Heavy to build, heavy to move, and heavy to decorate. The small grid, on the other hand, can only exist in dynamic state. It's impossible to connect it to the ground. That's why its use is limited to rovers and ships only. However, its small weight and compact cell size make it perfect for those applications. It allows to build rovers and ships that are light, maneuverable, easy to construct and highly detailed. Now that we know what types of grid exists, let's talk about how they behave and what can go wrong while building them. When building any grid, it's important to make sure you don't accidentally split it. For example, if you place a block like this, it might look connected, but in reality it's separate. This block isn't part of main grid, it's just adjacent. What's wrong with that, you might ask? Well, in Space Engineers, blocks aren't just cubes of metal. They actually transfer power and signals through their structure. So, if you have adjacent grids and think they're one system, you may run into frustrating problems, like losing access to power or signals between those grids. A simple but powerful way to check whether a grid is connected or to find its split is to place a control panel from time to time and make sure that when you access it, you can still see all the devices on the grid. It's cheap easy and worth keeping resources for a few in your inventory. Speaking of grid integrity, there are also moments when you'll want to intentionally split the grid. You can split any grid into pieces by grinding down the connection blocks, like this. When I grind down this block, the rest of the base remains static, while the separated piece becomes a dynamic grid, because at the moment of its creation it no longer has support from the ground. This works for any grid type, but you should be very careful when splitting static grids. 
Visually, it might look like both pieces are still in place and can be reconnected at any moment just by placing a new block between them, but that's an illusion. They are now completely separate grids, and to merge them back together, you'll need merge blocks. Even then, it might not always work, depending on the shape and alignment of the grids. Another important limitation you cannot merge different grid sizes. If you want to decorate your large grid with small grid details, you'll need to use subgrids for that. One more essential note. In Space Engineers, there's no such thing as structural integrity. That means you can technically build your entire base out of unwelded armor frames and they'll never break on their own. However, those frames are extremely fragile. A single bullet, a small rubber bump, or even careless grinding can destroy them instantly. Alright, now that we understand how grids form, split and behave, let's move on to how different grids can connect to each other. I like to distinguish four main types of relations. Connected grids. Grids join through connector blocks. This is a temporary connection that allows you to transfer power, data and resources between grids. It's very useful to connect in ships and rovers to bases. The key limitation is that this connection requires a counterpart connector that's ready to accept it, so you can't connect to the ground or an enemy structure like that. Locked or maglocked grids. Grids joined with magnetic plates or landing gears. This is also a temporary connection, but it doesn't transfer power or resources. However, it allows you to connect to anything – the ground, enemy ships or even moving vehicles. Merged grids. Grids joined with merged blocks. This connection can be temporary or permanent. If only the merge block touching at moment of merging, the connection is temporary. You can disable one of merge blocks to split them again. However, if other blocks are already aligned and ready to connect when the merge happens, the connection becomes permanent, effectively combining both grids into one. Temporary merged grids can transfer power and data, but not resources. The merge blocks themselves are limited in that regard. Subgrids – temporary connections that still allow limited movement between grids. These are defined by the block used to connect them. Currently there are three – pistons, rotors and hinges. Thanks to this, we can build all sorts of complex mechanisms to achieve our engineering goals. This relationship always allows the transfer of power and data, and in most cases resources too. The only exception is the regular rotor. If you want to transfer resources through a rotor, you'll need to use an advanced rotor instead. And that concludes our first lesson of the Engineering Academy. Now here is the secret ingredient to mastering everything we just learned. Jump straight into the game, create a creative work for yourself and mess around with the grids. Try out the craziest ideas you can see in CAF. Practice is the best teacher. While I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one, where we'll expand our toolbox with mechanical blocks like pistons, rotors and hinges. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Or even join the members club if you'd like to support my work. See ya, cadets!